Some will believe Christ and some will not. Some will embrace the gospel and some will not. But what is our responsibility? That's what we discuss today in the Word. Welcome back to Today in the Word. Hi, I'm Glenn Schaefer. Take just a moment and subscribe if you don't mind, and you'll be notified when these teachings come out. We're walking through the book of Romans. Today, we're in chapter 10, addressing what is our responsibility as believers, knowing that many will not believe, but many will. Well, Paul actually gives us steps related to how God works with us and bringing forth the gospel. Now, in context, he's addressing the fact that Israel has rejected the gospel in the day in which he's writing. Now, the Bible tells us that that would happen. Over in Isaiah, you see a clear picture of it in Isaiah chapter 6. I referenced it the other day in our teaching, but let me just read you this portion where Isaiah said, Here I am, Lord, I will go, when God said, Who will go and speak for me? And then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, God said, Go and tell them this. Now this is quoted over in the Gospels. But this is what God told the prophet to say. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. And Isaiah said, But how long, O Lord? And the Lord answered, Until the cities are laid waste without inhabitant, the houses are without man, the land is utterly desolate. The Lord has removed men from afar, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. But yet a tenth, or a tithe, will be in it, and will return and be the consuming as a Tiberth tree, or as an oak, whose stump remains when it is cut down, so the holy seed shall have its stump. In other words, great judgment Many will not believe, but a remnant, you remember talking about the remnant, a remnant will be saved. Or here he says a tenth or a tithe of that which belongs to the Lord. Isaiah prophesied what Paul is addressing with the Jews. But then he says in verse 14, listen to this, back in Romans chapter 10. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Let me pause right there. He gives this pattern. Send. That's the apostolic heart of the church to be sent. Preach. Share the gospel. They will hear, then they will believe, and then they will call on the Lord. You say, then why is it that God has chosen to use us? Isn't that powerful? Though He is sovereign, and He's the one that draws men, He's chosen us to be the instrument of evangelism. That's His church. That's His body. And that's the precious a call that's upon all of us. It is a privilege, for he says here in verse 15, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, quoting right out of Isaiah, who bring glad tidings of good things, right from the prophet of Nahum. Then verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth, 
and the words to the ends of the world. But I say, did Israel not know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. And I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. Now, this is so important for you to catch the heart of what's going on in the middle here of Romans 10. As we prepare to go into Romans 11, Paul is explaining how God in His sovereignty, according to the prophet Isaiah, ears are dull, eyes are closed, and yet he says, I want you to go preach the gospel. That means there are those who will hear. So God is sovereign over both. Even with His own people, He closed their ears in order to provoke them with jealousy, in order to allow the Gentiles to come in. For had they not been cut off, we would not have been grafted in. And that's where Paul is headed. You said, all of that does not make sense to me. That's where we trust the sovereign hand of God that is for His glory and His glory alone. For he said, I will provoke them to anger. And he said, I will provoke them to jealousy. A people who were not a people. A people who were not a nation. And then he says in verse 20, But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. Talking about the election of grace, that's the Gentiles who have been made a part through the gospel. But to Israel, he says, all day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. That's why in the next chapter Paul says, has God cast away his people? You would think that's what he's saying. But no, it's the remnant. It's the election of grace that he might show his glory in the earth that he's the one who draws men into his kingdom. When Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. That's the pattern of what we see. That ears hear by the word of God, but it's a spiritual hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes, when we read the scriptures, we pray that the Holy Spirit would reveal it to us. Here in this passage, he's talking about the gospel being heard. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the spiritual word. That means a rhema, a personal hearing. You see, the Holy Spirit convicts man. The Holy Spirit moves up on hearts. I'm always wanting to be sensitive when I sense the Holy Spirit moving. I don't know when he's doing that. But it's so amazing. Remember my wife, she loves to tell her story. I love to hear it. How she was 15 years old, sitting in First Baptist Church in Altus, Oklahoma, when the pastor spoke and said, we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. She said it was like a pierced arrow. For the first time, the Holy Spirit awakened her and quickened to her condition that she was lost. And she went home and she said, God, if that's you, if you're real, show yourself. And she sensed the presence of the Lord. Come into the room. A girl who knew nothing about the presence of God, knew nothing about the gospel. But God used that moment. You see, it doesn't take much. It's the spiritual hearing. It's the rhema. So she called a friend. Gene Parks, now Gene Williams, close friends of ours, some of our pastors now, and said, Gene, I've seen a change in your life. I want to explain to you what's happened to me. Do you think this is God? And that process, God used it. And here's what I want you to know. We're responsible to preach. We're responsible to share the gospel. And the Holy Spirit uses it to convict men and bring them into the kingdom. May our hearts burn for the lost as we go through the scriptures today in the Word.